Hey snails, I'm here to show you the will you snail level editor that is out right now. You can make some will you snail levels now. So this is a little mini tutorial on how to use the level editor. Step one in the level selection, you just walk to the left here, then you click that button. And then you say yes, unlock level editor. Then this down here is the editor. And this up here opens a window where you can download some levels if you want to download a level. All you have to do is click subscribe. For example, we uploaded the winter campaign. If you want to play the winter campaign, you just click that little plus here, which subscribes. And then you can see um, the game is downloading the campaign. And now that the downloading is complete, we can use this elevator to find the campaign we want. This is one of the menus we really have to improve. We're on it, but here, this is the winter campaign. It has 20 levels and I completed 0% of it and every campaign has its own little level selection now. Let's get to the level editor down here. Stand in front of that, click up and here we have the level editor. Wonderful. We'll create a new campaign. Just click on campaigns and then add a new campaign and we'll call our campaign Jonas. Nightmare. One cam campaign can have multiple levels. At the moment, our campaign only has one level, which is level one. If we want to rename it, we can click rename. All right, let's create stinky one. It's fairly straightforward. You just click on the object and then you can place the object with the right mouse button. You delete with the left mouse button. You create. You only create and delete the object you have selected. So for example, if I delete here, the walls don't disappear. If I want to delete everything, I need to use the delete tool. There are more objects. If you want to see more objects, you just right click on these and then you can see all of the objects that we have at the moment. I'm sorry, there are kind of not really any good tooltips. There are two tabs, one for the object, then one for the settings. And some objects do have a little bit of a description. For example, I hope that, yeah. The more out there, more weird objects uh, do have a little info right here. Logic gates will only let power through if a specific condition is met. Oftentimes you can also use Q and E to rotate through different looks. For example, I can use E to change the look of this wall here. And then other objects when you use E and Q are just rotated. Ooh, there's even a random placement variable now. Interesting. If enabled, the object places placed by this tool will be randomly offset. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Other than that, there's also this offset here. Instead of placing the spike in the middle of the tile, you maybe want to place it at the side here. You can do that. <laughs> if you want to use the AI trigger to make squid spawn stuff, then you have to use this AI trigger. And as you can see, this AI trigger has a crap load of settings. Most important, importantly, it has this AI on and off settings. This enables the AI, this disables the AI. So when I go through this, we'll see some traps being spawned. When I go through this, no more traps will be spawned. So now if we hit on play, you can see I enter here, we get some traps. And as soon as I go up here, there are no more, there are no more traps. Of course, there are tons and tons of settings for these triggers that you can modify. Important to know is these settings are only basically for the next object you place. So now when I edit any settings here, for example, if I edit the floor spike probability, then this trigger right here does not have those settings yet. If I want that trigger to have those settings, I have to overwrite it basically. And obviously the AI has to be enabled. Bloop. So with F3, you can very easily switch back and forth between level editor and play mode that is generally useful. With these properties here, there's one tool that I find really useful, which is this picker tool, where with the right button, you can pick the properties from something. So for example, if I wanna know the properties from this trigger here, I can just right click it, and then I can see all of the properties from, from that. I can modify them if I want to, and then I can paste them in with the left mouse button. And I can also use this, for example, if I want this trigger to have the same properties as this trigger, then I can copy from here by right clicking and then left click on this. And now we basically have the same settings on both triggers. We have a bunch more useful tools like that. For example, uh, Missing Texture Man made this duplicate tool. 
where if you want to duplicate something, you can select it and then place the entirety of it. Yeah, I can duplicate spikes. Okay, apparently just triggers and obviously snails are not duplicated. That's fine, I guess. Uh, I You can build as large as you want. I would encourage you to keep levels small though. So instead of building one giant level, it's really better to build a lot of small levels. That's why you can have multiple levels in your campaign. If you want another level in your campaign, just click the little plus icon and I don't know, call it stinky too. Generally for performance and also I think it's more fun to play short levels because there are no checkpoints in Will You Snail and there probably won't be. I, I would really encourage you to build small levels, but there are, no, there are no restrictions on how big you can build. Obviously we have a bunch of variable vi stuff as well. You can even make tower defense levels. I'm not gonna get into the details of that. In general, for example, if you wanna make a basketball level, you can just put a basketball here, put a hoop here, and then we can grab the door. And then we can grab the wiring tool. We can wire this door to the hoop. And now whenever something goes into that hoop, the door opens. Very, very simple and straightforward. And obviously one of the very fun things you can do and will you, uh, in, in the level editor is also chaining doors together. Once that door is open, that door will open. So they open one after another. You can also change how quickly the doors open with the uh, opening speed here. There are stuff like glass doors now. These doors will basically tra be transparent and you can use that for puzzles because glass doors let light rays through. Yeah, we have logic gates, we have... Uh, what the frick? We have smileys. I, I don't even know. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot we still have the triggers. Oh. 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 <laughs> if you get the ball in. If you're not a noob like I am. Then you can see those stars open one after another. Uh, some of you might be wondering, how do I change how the level looks at the moment? The way you do that is, oh my God, even the background style you can change already. <gasps> So the level theme uh, is basically, s you can choose between standard, disco, underwater, bubblegum, winter or brain. And those are basically the main chapter, the main themes that are in the game. Uh, for example, if we select underwater here, then suddenly the entire level is underwater. We have uh, zones where no traps can spawn. We have triggers that you can wire up and can change the music. And you can uh, have a camera trigger that changes the camera. You can specify different enemies and change a bunch of their variables, how fast they move and all that sort of stuff. So there are options. I'm just, I'm just letting you know, <laughs> there are a lot of options. Uh, okay, so let's say we're done with our level. In that case, we'll just click upload to Steamworks. Bloop, bloop. And this menu, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about this menu. We will uh, hopefully rework and improve this. For now, this is where you choose the tags for your level. You choose the correct tags and then you hit upload. <laughs> and then it's on Steam. So let's upload it. And now it's uploading. We're waiting. And this is what pops up. It's important to note that um, whatever you have in view when you hit that Steam upload button, that's what you'll have as a screenshot here. All in all, that's the level editor. I hope you enjoy. I hope you go wild. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be gonna be a lot of fun. And on the my on the main channel, I'll do a live stream with where I show off, off some of the community levels that have been made so far. Maybe we'll even run some building competitions. I think there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with the level editor now. I hope you enjoy building and I hope you enjoy playing infinite amount, infinite amounts of content. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.